Okay, so we're going to talk about ordinary method of slices. So, but let's um, let's start by reviewing um, what's the, what's what's the process again for doing slope stability. What's the process? What's the first thing we got to do? All right, so you got to get, you got to draw, you got to develop your profile. With soil properties, right? And then what are we going to do? We got we to determine the geometry of the failure surface. What's the likely failure? T you know, so. And the two that we're going to analyze are. What are the two methods that we were learning? Planar. Planar. Or circular. All right. So once you figure out based on your based on the uh, the soil profile, uh, if you don't have planar surfaces in there naturally created for you some reason, or it's not an infinite snow slope analysis. Infinite slope analysis. That was good. You're going to uh, have a circular analysis, right? And then what are you going to do? Yeah, we're going to guess. Guess a failure surface, right? A particular failure surface. Yeah. With soil properties. Okay, we're going to guess a failure surface, and then what are we going to do? Okay. What are we going to do with the free body diagram? Okay, we're, we're going to compute. What is it we're trying to compute? Factor of safety, and we're going to use um, one, two, three equilibrium equations. Right? We got summation of forces x equals zero, summation of forces y equals zero, and summation of moments is equal to zero. So we'll use one of those, one or more of those. And then we're also going to use that F is equal to the shear strength over the equilibrium shear stress mobilized along the failure surface. So we've, now we've computed the factor of safety. Are we done? No. Now we need, now we know the factor of safety on one particular surface, but now we're going to guess another surface. We're going to go, you know, we're going to go back up here and do this until we, whoops, have F min. And F min is the factor of safety we're going to use, right? So that's the process. Develop the soil profile with the properties. Based on our geometry of the surface, we're either going to analyze for failure or circular. In the real world, we could analyze for other shapes, but those are the two we're going to do. Once we know which type we're going to do, we're going to guess a failure surface. Draw the free body diagram for that surface. We're going to compute F. How are we going to know which equilibrium equations we're going to use? Depends on the kind of analysis we're going to do. If, the, if it's a circular surface and it's undrained, uh, we can do an undrained analysis with SU, we can use Swedish, Swedish uh, slip circle method. And which one of these equations are we? We're only going to use one equation in that method. Which one is it? We're going to use the moment equation. If we're doing a, if it's a, a planar surface, we're going to use these two, right? All right. So what's the limit 
What's the limitations of the Swedish slip circle? What's the big limitation of that one? Yeah, it's, it's only for phi equals zero conditions, or where S is equal to SU, right? That's the only time we can use it. And why do we get away with that really simple equation that, that F is just equal to summations of moment resisting divided by summations of moment driving? How can we get away? What, what's What's it about this analysis that allows us to do that? There's a really simple derivation, right? Man, somebody had some nasty lunch. I can still smell it. Something with cheese. Why do we sum? Why do we sum moments about the center of the? Uh, circle. We eliminated what? Right, when we did summation about the center of the circles is zero, sigma on the failure surface uh, gave no moment, right? So we didn't need to know that, but, but why, wh why is it that we didn't need it? It's actually sigma prime. Why, why didn't we need to know sigma on the failure surface? No, no, we, we chose to, no, we, we didn't need to, we didn't not need to know it because it had a zero moment. We chose to sum the, the uh, moment about the center because we didn't, we, we didn't want to know that. We didn't need to know it. Why didn't we need to know the normal stress on the failure surface? Because S is equal to SU, right? It's not equal in this case to C prime plus sigma prime tan phi prime because we have phi equals zero conditions. That's the only reason. So, and that's great when undrained conditions apply, but when, when we don't have an undrained analysis, we have to do a drained analysis, we're going to have this equation for the shear strength, so we're going to need to do a different analysis. So that takes us to the ordinary method of slices. All right, so let's look at the ordinary method of slices now. Okay, so this is suitable for conditions where we have that the shear strength is equal to C prime plus sigma prime tan phi prime. <clears throat> and we can do this analysis. Uh, I'm going to draw a, a water table in here. So, whoops, that's not a very good one. Let's say the water table looks something like this. That's the groundwater table. And um, we're going to divide the um, slope up into slices as shown here. Uh, the number is relatively arbitrary since we're going to do this with a, a spreadsheet or a numerical program. We can divide up into a lot of slices, which means we don't have to spend a lot of time talking about how to divide it up into slices. And here's the free body diagram for any one slice, right? Where we're going to have the weight of the slice, and then on each side, we're going to have uh, two reactions. We're going to have a normal reaction. This is, this is written in terms of forces here. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a normal and a frictional reaction and a shear reaction on each side. And then on the base of the slice, we'll have a normal and a shear force on the base of the slice. And then what am I missing on here? We're missing one force on here that we could have. Right, so we, can, we're, we also have a, a U that, that, that uh, pore pressure is going to be acting on there. All right, so how many unknowns do I have? And, and, and we're doing this now because we, we need to know the normal force now because the normal force is going to be required for us to calculate the, the strength. Okay, so let's just uh, do a quick tally here. Uh, number of unknowns. How many unknowns do we have here? Well, what's unknown? What's unknown in here? Uh, 
So we don't know in, right, at the bottom of the slice. How many of those do I have? So n sub i, I've got n of those. All right, what else don't I know? Okay, I don't know t. t sub i, I've got one of those for each one. I've got n of those, right? What else don't I know? Yeah, so I got two side forces. Now realize that the, for, if I was looking at the fourth slice, that the side forces on the left side of the fourth, fourth slice are the same as the side forces on the right side of the third slice, right? So I have, let's just call it E sub I and um, S sub I. How many of those do I have then, each one of those? How many unknowns do I have? N minus one, because because between the slices are the same. So I have n minus one of those and n minus one of those. And there's another one which you always forget, but it's an important, I don't know the factor of safety. And how many factors of safety are there? One. We're going to assume that the factor of the safety on the bottom of each slice is the same. Now somebody asked this question. That's not necessarily true. But we're going to make the assumption that the ratio of the mobilized shear stress to the shear strength is the same on the bottom of each slice. That's not true, but we're going to make that assumption. Okay, so that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, n minus 1. Uh, that's 4 n minus 1 unknowns I've got, right? How many equations do I, and, uh, and I, know, I know W, right? And, uh, and I'm going to know, and I know the length of this. Right, we're going to calculate W, we're going to take gamma times the area, right? You all did that already. I know alpha because that's going to be the angle at the bottom, and I, I'm, an, I'm going to know L, which is the uh, length of the, of the bottom of the slice. Um, so I know all those. So how many equations do I have to operate with here? Well, for each slice, what do I have? I got three equations for each slice, right? I got Summation of forces x, summation of forces y, and a moment for each slice. So I've got 3n, uh, plus I have one more for the overall uh, summation of moments is equal to 0. So I actually have 3n plus 1. OK, so what's my problem? I got 4n minus I got 4n minus 1 unknowns and I only got 3n plus 1 equations. So, what do we got to do? All right, we got to get rid of some unknowns. So, we're going to we're going to do this we're going to do this great thing to get rid of unknowns. We're going to assume Remember this, right? So we got to be careful what we assume. So the very first thing we're going to assume um, for the ordinary method of slices we're just going to ignore uh, the inner slice forces, both e, e sub i and s sub i. Sometimes you hear people say that we assume they're equal to zero. We're not really assuming they're equal to zero. We're just going to ignore them in the uh, process of the analysis. All right? So if I do that, uh, how many unknowns am I getting rid of? So I'm, get, I'm getting rid of 2n uh, minus 2, right? And so now my number of unknowns is going to be equal to 2n plus 1. I believe that's right. And I have 3n plus 1 equations, so I don't even need to use all my equations. All right, so here's how we're going to do that analysis. So for the ordinary method of slices, um, here's our slice for any generic slice. Um, this is going to be alpha, right? 
Uh, the length of the slice here is going to be L. And I know alpha and I know W, right? I'm just going to calculate W from the area of the slice times the unit weight of the slice. If I got multiple layers of soil in the slice, then, um, you know, I'll have to calculate the area for each soil. Okay, and then we're going to, we're going to choose to use, uh, we're going to choose this axis system that's parallel to the base of the slice and perpendicular to the base of the slice. Um, and so uh, we're going to use summation of forces in the one direction is equal to zero. Okay, so what are, let's finish our uh, free body diagram. I've got a normal force acting here. I've got a shear force acting here. And I also have a pore pressure, P, acting there, right? Did I, did I miss any? Uh, this one's kind of hard to see. Let me draw that one again. I've got T. I don't know if that's any better. N, T, and then I've got uh, P, which is my uh, pore pressure acting on the base. Okay, so summation of forces in the one direction is equal to zero. So that's going to be zero is equal to T, right? Uh, minus what's the other force that's going to be acting in the in the? Uh, whoops, did this backwards. Uh, one direction and the two direction. Sorry about that. What other force is acting in the one direction? Yeah, W and then, now this is alpha here, so um, if that's the normal to this, then this is going to be alpha. So it's going to be W times sine alpha, right? Oh, I can write that T is equal to just W sine alpha. All right, so then I'm going to use summation of forces in the two direction is equal to zero. So what forces are acting in the two direction? So I'm going to have zero is equal to okay. So I'm going to have N plus P and what else is acting? So it's going to be minus W cosine alpha, right? So that because the the, port, the portion uh, uh, in the normal direction here is going to be cosine alpha. All right. So from these, I want to calculate my. I know I need to know my equilibrium shear stress. So what's the equilibrium shear stress going to be? That's the shear stress required. That's the shear stress on the basis of the of the slice required for equilibrium. What is it? Hmm. It's, it's, T's a force, so it's so it's going to be T divided by L. Right. And uh, what's L equal to? Well, let's just leave it as L for right now. That's going to be T divided by L. Okay, and what is uh, my shear strength equal to? C prime plus sigma prime tan phi prime. Um, so I need to be able to, cal to calculate sigma prime. What's sigma prime? Well, that's going to be Sigma prime is just N over L minus P over L, right? That should, this is sigma, and this is U, right? Yeah? Are we good with that? But I, 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 what I'm going to know here is not P over U. I'm just going to know U. So I'm just going to write U in there. Because we'll know the pore pressure at the, at the base of the slice. How are we going to know the pore pressure at the base of the slice? I'm going to put my little piezometer here at the slice. Water's going to rise to there. This is going to be the, the, uh, the head. 
right? That's going to be the total head, right? I just take that times gamma water. Total head times gamma water, that is equal to U, right? Okay, so that gives me that the shear strength then is going to be C prime plus W cosine uh, alpha over L minus U times the tangent of phi prime. Right? Everybody with me? Okay, so and what, what's the definition of the factor of safety? Shear strength over t equilibrium shear stress, S over tau E. All right, so S is C prime plus W cosine alpha over L minus U times tan phi divided by what's the equilibrium, equilibrium shear stress? Is just T over L. Right? <clears throat> so if I multiply by L over L, I'm going to get that the factor of safety is equal to C prime uh, L uh, plus W cosine alpha minus U times L times tan phi prime all over T. Now that's just for one slice, right? So how do I get the factor of safety for the whole thing? All I'm going to do is I'm going to just sum this from n equals 1 to m. And this is going to be c sub i, l sub i, w sub i, cosine l sub sub i, u sub i, l sub i, uh, phi sub i over uh, t sub i. So I just have to calculate this for every, every uh, slice. That's all you got to do for the ordinary, ordinary method of slices. And the nice thing about it is, because we've made this assumption, notice we have a, a, a very a direct formula. Uh, we can directly compute the factor of safety now. So your job uh, for next Tuesday is to write a spreadsheet. I, there's, I've given you one problem in the, in, the, in the textbook to do using ordinary, ordinary method of slices. And all you have to do is take your slope, you divide it up into slices. Um, there should be some obvious places you want to divide it up into slices. Um, if you have uh, a slope that has two different soils, if you've got one soil down there and one soil up here, the first place you're going to divide it up is that where the soil boundaries hit. That way you only have one shear, you only have one material on the bottom, right? And then you're going to divide it places where it's convenient, like at the top of the slope. And then you're just going to put some other ones in here, where that whatever it makes it convenient. So six to ten slices should be fine for a hand calculation. So it's the same process that you're doing right now for your, your, your Swedish slip circle, except you're going to take different parameters off. And then for every slice, you're just going to, you're going to assume the base of the slice is, um, is just a line. You're going to have to calculate alpha. You can either slap your protractor down there, or you can draw it in AutoCAD and, and pull the slope off of AutoCAD. That either way, that's fine. And then you're just going to tally for each, for each um, um, slice. Whoops. I don't know how that happened. Hang on. For each slice, then, you just need to compute the cohesion. Uh, you need to measure L. You need to compute the weight. You need to know alpha. Uh, you need to know U. You're going to get that from the height of the water table. L, you're already done. Phi, you know. And you're going to calculate T. And then you're just going to add them all up. It's a real simple spreadsheet to do. You need to do that spreadsheet uh, for your problem set, and you also need to do it for your project, because in your project, you're going to hand check one solution. OK? Questions about that? So it's a pretty simple extension for, from, 
from uh, the Swedish slip circle method, all we're doing is we have to know the normal force now because because our shear strength is is now defined as cohesion plus the normal stress times the friction angle. We've got to know sigma, so we can't use that really we can't use that simplification that we were using before because we've got to know sigma. So it doesn't do any it's any good to to some moments about the center of the circle because we've got to know sigma anyway. So it's just a little more work, but once you get in your spreadsheet, it's actually very little more work. Okay, now what did we assume to get here? How did, how did we get the solution? What, is the, what was the simplification we did? Yeah, we, 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 we just totally ignored the stresses between, to, between the, the, the slices. Does that sound like a good solution? <laughs> good for you. Makes it easy. So it turns out it's not a terrible solution. It all, and, and fortunately, it turns out to be a conservative solution. It'll always give you a factor of safety that's, that's low. But if you um, wanted to optimize your thing, you're, 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 you're going to have a factor of safety that's low. So there's a, there's a second method we can use, uh, which I'm, we're not gonna I'm not going to derive um, for you, but I am going to show you um, um, I'm going to show the assumptions and I'll show you the answer to it. Uh, and that's um, modified or sometimes called simplified Bishop's method. So this is the second method we're going to do. This turns out to be um, significantly more accurate than, than the ordinary method of slices. In the simplified Bishop's method, we're going to assume that S's are equal to zero. We're going to, we're going to assume there's no shear stress between each of the um, between the slices. We're ignoring the shear stresses between the slices. And we're going to have to use um, um, more equal we're going to use in this one, uh, we're going to use um, one summation of forces is equal to zero plus one summation of moments is equal to zero. And I'm not going to derive this for you, but these are the equilibrium equations we're going to use. And now we've got, we got another set of unknowns in this one. But when we're done with this one, it, it'll be a similar process. And if we do this one, you're going to find out that F is equal to the summation of, let's see, in this one, we're going to use, rather than the, the length of the base of the slice, we're going to use m, which is the width of the slice, to characterize the slice. It just makes the calculations a little simpler. And we're going to end up with um, that the factor of safe, safety is equal to m times c prime plus w minus the pore pressure times m times tan phi prime all times psi, uh, I'll show you what psi is in just a second, divided by the summation of W sine alpha. So that looks, that looks fairly similar to the previous one, except I have this psi term in here. And psi is equal to cosine alpha plus sine alpha times tan phi prime over the factor of safety. So it's just a little easier to write that way. So th we're, we're going to use the same process that we did before. We're going to write our equilibrium equations. We're going to solve for the normal stresses and the shear stresses. We're going to use that, that S is equal to C prime plus sigma prime tan phi prime. So same process we went through with ordinary method of slices. But now uh, we're going to include the side forces. And when we do that, this is the equation that we get. So it's slightly more, slightly different than our previous one. It's slightly more complicated, but there's one problem with it. And what's the problem with it? Factor safety, you can't explicitly solve for the factor of safety. It's on both sides of the equations. It's over here, and it's in here in, the, in that side term, which is on this side. So how do we solve this? So, but everything else, you know, everything else is straightforward, right? 
Uh, M is the width of the slice. We know that. C is the cohesion at the base of the slice of that. W, we know how to calculate that. U, know we know how to calculate that. Phi, we know that. Alpha is the angle at the bottom of the slice. Everything else is easy, right? So we're just going to, again, we're going to have our spreadsheet. We're going to have our tab, table across the top. Uh, but but what, how do we actually solve this one? Yeah, the first thing we have to do is, is guess. Help if I could write. We're going to have to guess F, right? And then we're going to compute. So this is going to be F1. Then we're going to compute F2. And we're going to have a delta F is equal to F1. I should call this guess Fn. And we're going to compute Fn plus 1 is equal to Fn plus 1 minus Fn. And then what are we going to do? We're going to take Fn plus 1. We're going to put it in here. And we're, going to, and we're just going to do this over and over again until this delta F is nice and small. How long is that going to take? Well, with the spreadsheet, it'll take you about three seconds. So, you, you, so your, your job for next week, uh, for next Tuesday, is there's, there's uh, one problem from the back of the book, and we ask you to solve it with both ordinary method of slices and um, Bishop Simplified method. And so you basically have to develop the spreadsheets for this equation and for and for this equation, and the, the information, the same information comes off of the off of the, the the slices. So it's a pretty straightforward process, and you need to do both of those for your project. Yes. Is there a separate, uh, frame? So how would you do bishop? So th that, th there's a good method. L let's let's just take ordinary method of slices. What's going to happen to this under drain conditions? So under undrain, this, this this is for drain conditions, right? We've got C prime, right? What happens what happens under uh, undrain conditions? That's a really good question. So what's the only difference between under un, undrain conditions? Let's see. Let me change colors for this. Let's do this uh, undrained in blue. So how do how does how does my equation for the factor of safety change when it's when it's we're under undrained conditions? <laughs> phi is equal to zero, so that goes to zero, right? So this whole term goes to zero. Because well, what's tangent of uh, zero? Zero. Okay, very good. And this turns into. Um, This, this turns into um, the Swedish slip circle method. Because now you're going to have f is equal to the summation uh, of c. What's c going to be under undrained conditions? So it's going to be su times li over t. And you're going to sum that up for every, every single one. It turn, you're going to give you the exact same answer that you get from um, the Swedish slip, slip circle method. So all you have to do, and, and you can do the same, you can do the same um, exercise for, for Bishop's method. All you're going to do for the case where it's undrained is phi is going to be equal to zero, and c is going to be equal to su, and you just press on with the same same calculation. And you're not going to put the pore pressure in because there won't be any pore pressure, because it'll be a total stress analysis. You don't care what the pore pressure is. Okay. Cool. Good questions. All right. Oh. Let's see. Do I have? All right. Any other questions about? So you so you're you're gonna have to go do this to figure it out. But but do those two problems and you'll have this all figured out. Uh,